morning for bringing us to learn at your feet. We thank you, God, for the gift of a new day. We pray that you help us, you get us situated within and without to hear and kneel at your feet to hear you. Open up our hearts, O God, and grant us understanding into the depths of your knowledge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we are continued in the topic, the characteristics of uh, ungodly uh, leaders. And so today we are going to talk about dishonesty. Dishonesty. And our text is taken from Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 1. Book of Isaiah, chapter 1. And we read from verse 21. I read from here. How the faithful city has become a harlot. It was full of justice, righteous lodged in it, but now murderous. Your silver has become dross. Your wine is mixed with water. Your princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loves bribes and follows after rewards. They do not defend the fatherless, nor does the cause of the widow come before them. Therefore the Lord says, The Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ha, I will rid myself of my adversaries, and take vengeance of my, on my enemies. I will turn my hands against you and thoroughly purge away your dross and take away all your alloy. I will destroy your judges as at the first and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with justice and a penitence with righteousness. The destruction of transgressors and of sinners shall be together, and those who forsake the law shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed of the terabith trees which you have desired, and you shall be embarrassed because of the gardens which you have chosen. For you shall be as the terabith whose leaf fades, and as a garden that has no water. The strong shall be as tender, and the work of it as a spark, both with bond together, and no one shall quench them. This is the word of the Lord. So today we said we are looking at dishonesty, and we have three aims. To study the biblical concept of dishonesty. Two, to analyze factors that promote dishonesty in contemporary society and to expose the tragic effect of dishonesty from a biblical perspective. So, introduction. Dishonesty is doing something that lacks integrity and with an aim to cheat, lie, or deceive someone or a group. Dishonesty is a product of a corrupt mind, disabled conscience, and selfish interest. What are the factors that promote dishonesty? and the effect of dishonest leadership, dishonest leadership in our nation, community, church, and in our individual homes. Praise God. Before we go forward, can somebody remind us what we treated last Sunday? Injustice. And uh, who can give us a definition of what injustice means? be unequal or unbalanced or unfair in your actions uh, or laws or uh, motives towards people or any any person. Okay. Um, we went for that to say that injustice is when true sense of judgment is altered for selfish or for 
any other reason. When you know this is supposed to be this and you change it for some reasons. And we talked about the consequences and we went for that to say injustice is not only limited to leaders in government. It could happen in church. It could happen in our homes. Um, when you have, uh, we talked about having favorite child, even if he doesn't demand or marry something because it's she or he, he or she is your favorite, you pass judgment on them or give them what they do not desire, the detriment of others. And we also talked about church and individuals in our places of work that uh, injustice is not limited to uh, the leadership or the government as we seem to think. Today we are looking at dishonesty and we have given an introduction to dishonesty as doing something that lasts integrity and when we do it we have the aim to cheat, lie or deceive someone or a group. So, study guide. We are asked to point out the major cause of dishonesty in today's study test. Reference we, they want us to reference uh, Isaiah 59, 3 to 8. Isaiah 59, 3 to 8. And like I always say, when we go through this kind of study, let us be careful to, first of all, uh, apply the word to our own lives uh, so that we'll be able to partake from it. 59 from verse 3 to 8. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perversity. Okay, guys, can you, can you keep it down a little bit? Thank you. No one calls for justice, nor does any plead for truth. They trust in empty words and speak lies. They conceive evil and bring forth iniquity. They hash vipers' eggs and weave the spider's web. He who is of their head dies, and from that which is crushed, a viper breaks out. Their web will not become garments, nor will they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the art of violence is in their hands. Their feet turn or run to evil and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their path. The way of peace they have not known, and there is no justice in their ways. They have made themselves crooked path. Whoever takes that way shall not know peace. So, now, the answer we should point out the major cause of disturbance in today's test. Remember our test is Isaiah chapter 1. We read, we read from 21 to 31. Anybody? Anybody? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So according to what we read, um, verse, five, verse 4 said, None call it for justice, nor plead it for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. So we're supposed to point out the major cause of dishonesty, dishonesty from this place. Um, I would say when we are vain, uh, when we trust more in the flesh, and we live in sin, it's easy for us to be dishonest because we don't have the fear of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that comment. Uh, if you look at where we read today, there was a place that talked about, um, we look at uh, verse 23. Let's look at verse 23. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 23 says, Your princes are rebellious. So, and 
companions of thieves. Everyone do what? They love bribes and follow after rewards. So if you look at this passage and we look at the question, so I point out the major causes of dishonesty in today's text. So if you look at it, people follow after rewards. I, I, I'm, I'm old, a little bit old enough to tell about how the corruption of police started in Nigeria, especially in, in, in my area. The police will stand on the way. Their job is to make sure that armed robbers or things don't happen. They stay. And so in the course of their waiting, they stay on that sun, and they have to check cars. Okay, when a bus or a car is coming, they wave the person down, check inside the car. And when the car is supposed to move, the job is checked to see everything is okay and pass the car. Then it comes from, oh, the driver feels or people inside the car feels that uh, they are under the sun. Please take this water. Take this thing to take care of you guys and the sun. You need shade. Then it, becomes an, it became an entitlement that if you don't give that, there's a problem. They will say, pack, 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 pack. Then they will start finding faults. And we all know what they were looking for. So what seems to be um, uh, an act of kindness became a way of bribe. And because everybody is looking for reward. That reward is for selfish gain to anybody. And when we look at that word, it will apply to every sector of our economy, our church, our environment, our home. So, like some young ones who say, they say, go and wash plate. They say, what are you going to give me for washing plate? So now, if they made you to do something without a that reward, is either you do it in a rough way, or you don't do it the way you are supposed to do it. So, what really breeds dishonesty is evil gain like you want to you want to make money or you want to get fame at all costs somebody who's contesting for an election you rig election that dishonesty and why do you want to do that because you want everybody is interested in bribe everybody is interested in reward this is me just pointing out some of the things that makes people to be dishonest can we look at other examples or any other suggestion okay ma'am Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In verse 7, uh, one of the causes of dishonesty is one wouldn't stand on truth. One wouldn't stand in speaking truth. Uh, it say it can, their feet can run to evil. And because we don't stand in truth, it can cause us to share blood by killing or in one way or the other, harming someone. I say their thoughts are thought of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are their path. That is the Part of a person that doesn't stand in truth, uh, always like to maneuver or do one of the one of one of these things that doesn't please God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, ma'am. Any other comments? Why do you think people get dishonest? Fear. Fear can bring dishonesty. Do you agree? There are some people for the fear of their future, they have to join the wagon, join the people. Am I going to lose my job? If And one of the things that is so worse about corruption and injustice and dishonesty is that it gets to a point that we lose our conscience to tell us what we are doing is wrong. And then you just keep doing it. It becomes a norm. Even when you know that this thing is wrong, it becomes difficult. Some even accept it. They say, God understands. And some people believe that there's a level of dishonesty. What about you lying about your age? That's dishonesty. It's a lie. You are born 1980. I'm not saying you were born 1980. He was looking at my face like, how did you know? I know you were not born 1980. But... Because you want to get a certain job, you have to lie about your age. That dishonesty. It looks, you know, I keep saying it, most Africans, when we come to this place, the system says that you need experience to work. Then 
you look for one name somewhere, or your brother is working in one place, please, can I use your company? Then you write it there and say, I've worked there. It looks that you are smart, but what it is, is dishonesty. If they find out, is it true? No, it's not true. And why do we do that? Because we are afraid, we are afraid or careful to get a job. I just want us to be so practical about why do people, why are they dishonest? Why somebody was saying that all those things that politicians say, that they don't worry, we get you out. If you cannot lie, even here, if you cannot lie, you cannot be a politician. That's what they said. Because if you lie, you cannot be elected. You can only say what you know that you can do, and it may not appeal to people as being true to what you can do, so they won't vote for you. But you have to go there and promise everyone and that. Then the reality or, or the inefficiency of human beings sets on you, and some of them, you know you are even lying that you cannot do. Praise the Lord. God will help us to change when this thing convinces us or when the time comes for us to remember. Because it's not how we feel about something that matters, but how God feels about it. Mommy. Yeah. Thank you. It's an easier way. It seems um, so easy. Uh, the last time I went home and I was coming, one guy, you know, if you get there, you will see one expressway. They say, citizen, I don't know why they write that thing. Then the normal one that you have to kill. So the guy, I saw him bribe his way and quickly, bram, he went. But the funniest thing is that when I got to where we were supposed to get into the plane, the guy was behind me. <laughs> he wanted, and I, we are going to the same place. Why are you in a hurry? The same plane. Then you are bribing your way so that all those long queue, you won't pass through it. Praise the Lord. Number two, any question, any suggestion? Or... Let's go to number two. How will you describe dishonesty in contemporary society in the context of the following biblical passages? So let's take it one after the other. Genesis 37. I need somebody to open to Second Samuel 11. Genesis 37. We read from 31 to... We read from 31 to 35, I read from him. So they took Joseph's tunic, killed a kid of the goat, and dipped the tunic, that is his clothes, in the blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, We have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? And he recognized it and said, It is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Without doubt, do you see that? Without doubt, Joseph is torn to pieces. So they said we should stop at 35. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Praise the Lord. So will you, how will you describe dishonesty in contemporary society in the context of the following passage? Um, uh, let me read 39.5 because it's closer. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus, he left all that he had in Joseph's hands, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he had. Well, we asked to stop at uh, oh, only. Okay, please read Second Samuel. For to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him in all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem, and it came to pass in an eventide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. 
And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messages and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay and she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm reading Acts 5, 1, 2. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and he brought back part of the proceeds. His wife, also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan feed your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the prayers of the land for yourself? Okay, so they said we should stop at part two. Now, with all the passages we have read, how will you describe dishonesty in contemporary society in the context of these Bible passages? Okay, sir. So what they're asking is, what other name can you call dishonesty based on where we have read? Go ahead, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, um, before... I think about the other name. Let me just talk generally on each of those passages. Mm -hmm. One, uh, the story of Joseph's brothers. They were dishonest when they lied against him, lied about him because they didn't want him, they didn't like him. They sold him out, they lied to the father that uh, a beast had killed him. Then that takes us to uh, the story of David, where he, he, he liked the wife of Uriah, and um, because he desired the woman, he sent Uriah to, the, to war and put him where he's sure that he will be killed, battle. front. So the man died and he, he, he gained it. But that was the beginning of the problem of David. Also, for uh, the brothers of Joseph, that action later haunt them in future because he became the prime minister in Egypt after going through all sorts of problems, he later became the prime minister. So when people are dishonest, they may have the first laugh, but ultimately it turns around to hurt them and hurt them some. It hurts them terribly because the child... David gave birth to from that uh, experience later died despite all what he did to keep the child alive and that was the beginning of the problem of uh, David so going to another word for dishonesty <laughs> maybe someone else can help me with that <laughs> okay. yeah. there's something while the microphone is going to her, there was something that touched me in Genesis 37 Do you know the Bible says uh, the man's sons and daughter, they were trying to comfort him even when he was crying. And these are the same people that knew what happened, that Joseph wasn't dead. So, it is so, it's so, it's so sad. <laughs> the man was weeping, thinking, oh, for sure, my son is dead because of deception. And so, the same people, they lied they put their, peop their father in jeopardy. Of, he, the man was even thinking of dying. He said, I will go down to the grave. And they would just, you know, like they would be patting their dad, don't cry. And I see them looking at their face and say, you know. And, and this thing happens. It happens everywhere. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Pastor already said the word I wanted to use. The word I wanted to use is deceit. Another word for, if you look at the three passages, just like he mentioned, Joseph was not killed. They just messed up his clothes with blood and deceived their father. That's dishonesty. That's deceit. The second passage, if we read further, we all know the story. David fell, you know, looked at another man's wife and wanted her, desired her, slept with her. And when she found out, when he found out she was pregnant, he decided to pretend like, you know, try to take her home and pretend the baby belongs to the husband. And, this, and when that wasn't working, 
he deceived him, you know, to go fight in an army, and he was killed. So, in the other passage, you see Ananias and Sapphira, they provided something to the church, they donated and claimed that this is what they are given, and that is not what they are given. So that's deceit. And one thing I see there is, the person you are deceiving, all the three people that they deceived in that thing, um, Joseph, uh, Joseph uh, Jacob, which is Joseph's father, um, Uriah, which is the husband of the, the lady, Abashaba, and um, the, the Christians, or the, the church, that Ananias and Sapphira deceived. They didn't, they didn't know. So you're the one who is the deceiver. You're the one that knows the truth. And the person you are deceiving may not know the truth, but who knows the truth? God knows the truth. That's just one thing I wanted to point out from those three passages. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, thank you, Ma. To, to butter, uh, further buttress the point, uh, there are some dishonesty that will never be discovered on this earth. And... But the confidence I have is that our God is the right judge. The Bible says both day and night are open to him. In fact, if he can grant a man to see what another man is doing in the secret house, how would God not know what is going on in our own mind? You know, when you are saying something and it's different to what you have in your mind, that's dishonesty. You are, you are making somebody to feel that he's your friend. But deep in your mind, you have evil thought towards that person. That's dishonesty. So I just want us to look at it so that it won't look like uh, because government disappoints you. That's no. We have to zoom it down to things that are applicable to us. You know, praise the Lord. Point three. So what impact does dishonest leadership? And I'm, I want to change this topic. That what impact does dishonesty have on the nation and the judgment of God on dishonest uh, people? What impact does it have if we are dishonest? What impact does it have on people? So uh, let's read. I will read first, first uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 21 to 23. Let me read from here. How the faithful city has become a harlot. It was full of justice, but righteousness lodge in it, but now they are murderers. Verse 2, your silver has become dross, your wine is mixed with water. Now verse 23, your princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loves bribes. And follow after he was. They do not defend the fatherless, nor does the cause of the widow come before them. Please, this is loaded. I want us to analyze it. What, what impact does dishonest action have on people and a nation? Ma? Rebellion. And what is rebellion? A revolt against constituted authority. Revolt against constituted authority. That's just rebellion. You rebel against authorities, maybe at home, in church, in your places of work, um, in the government, in the nation. Any other point? Okay. This is the one. Please, please, ma, leave her alone. Give a microphone. You might, you can't you can't say. Go ahead, please. God protect us because um the book try to get near us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you heard what she said. God protect us because devil always try to get close to us. We are gonna use that word at the end of this uh, study. Thank you so much. Uh, Reverend. Please, ma, whenever she wants to speak, let her speak. You don't need to ask. She's, she's a complete human being. <laughs> yes. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It can bring about uh, depression, uh, 
people can get agitated. It can bring about uh, reactions that um, the, even the leaders might not like eventually. It could turn around to hurt them, the uh, resultant effect. Not that it could, it will. It will, it will, it yeah. will. It, it definitely will. will. Okay. So, yes, ma'am. Good point. And, and I will summarize with, the, I love the way they put this thing one by one, and I will give you a practical example of it, how relevant it is to us. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, one of the impacts that dishonest leadership can have on a nation or a people or a group could be the seed. The seed of dishonesty can be sown to the younger generation. You know, grow. like when you begin to believe something, you live in it. Just like you say in Nigeria, for example, I, I use Nigeria because that's my beloved country. Something, you know, a system has been so consistent that people now believe in survival. You know, it's either you join them or you're out. So that's the seed. It's hard for you to be, you begin to believe that this, that's the system we are in it, and you begin to breed a lot of people in the lower place, the junior. You know, like let's say the head is is corrupt, the one underneath will say, okay, I can't do anything different. They're corrupt, and then it begins to trickle down, and before you know it, the whole place is corrupt, and you hardly find people who can see things differently. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for that. Let's look at the place we read. Initially, he said the city is full of justice. You know, justice and righteousness lives in it. But now, who are those that are there? Murderers. And what do murderers do? They kill. So people die. Look at, look at our nation. Some people walk into church, kill 50 people. People are traveling to go and meet their family or going for business. Somebody stops them and kill them, take them into the bush. So when we systematically practice injustice and unrighteousness and um, um, dishonesty, you are asked to construct a road. You collected money. Instead of using one bag of cement, you cut it into half. That road will not last. Then pot oil, accident begin to happen. What happened? Death follows. As a leader, some farmers are given fertilizers to use. You cage it and sell it. It will later come back because what the effect of that fertilizer is to feed the nations. And then when there's not enough to give enough crops, hunger will visit the land. Then it devalues the money of that nation. Says their silver has become what? Dross. Look at it. Injustice have made most of this nation that some people, a dollar, you will use one bag, big bag, to carry one dollar equivalent of their money because of corruption of the leaders. If you look at it, their wine, quality of life is, is missed. Even our petrol is adulterated. That's dishonesty. And you begin to hear engine of things knocking. So people that are supposed to stand in integrity, they are rebellious. You will see, there was a video of one young lady that one guy did. He was going, he said, I just came back from Dubai. He said, oh, and some of my friends live in this area that uh, we need some ladies. He said, okay, are you interested? Yeah, how much? We're going to pay you one million or how many million? The lady said, okay. But the boy now said, but before you go, you are going to do some funny, stupid things. He said, like what? You are going to sleep with animal. The lady said, ah. Okay, okay. But are you going to give me the money now? And the boy said, I'm ashamed of you. So you can sleep with animal because what's your problem? How much do you have in life that you cannot? And some part of people will blame her, some will not blame her. But how did we get there as a nation? It's because of, 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 of dishonesty on the part of our government, on the part of our people. Because when we say government, whenever you go to your school to go and get your results, you will see an ordinary clerk at the front of us. They will, they will tell you your file is here, but do what is normal. When I went to South, because I refused to give them 7,000 naira then, several years back, about 20 something years back, in anger, they sent me to the, to the village where no copper has visited before. 
And, that, and that's, that's, the, that's the problem we have. And I want to be frank that even in church, it happens. It happens in church. The sonnet's behavior, when you see constituted structure, some people rebel against it just for selfish reasons. And they will cook up lies. All these things will have resultant effect. And do you know what I discover? Families that, does not, that do those things, their children, they don't grow in the way of the Lord. Because they see. Once you start talking against church, against the pastor, they hear from it. And it's hard for you to bring them to the Lord. We need to be careful. Dishonesty. You will hear some lies. You will wonder, where is this thing coming from? It does have effect. And now, he said, so their princess, they become thieves. Everyone will love bribe. Have you collected your own? You know, election time is coming now. Human beings are getting missing. Dollar went up because some people hoard dollars. And then collect, uh, if I, in, in front of one place, whether it was the church, they were doing registration. So as you do your something, they give you envelope. You collect those things. Your conscience is being seared for what you want to eat just for a moment. Then that government you're supposed to see, you don't hear them later. In fact, they go in silence. You can't have access to them again. Praise the Lord. So, and the last one that I want us to look at is that once those things are happening, the real thing that the church, the government are supposed to do, they will not focus on it. There will be problem, we'll be facing problem. Then you look at it, said they do not defend the fatherless. It's just amazing to me that our kids go to school here, they feed them in the morning, they feed them in the afternoon. And then you go back to our country. <laughs> Even if some, some bring that food, teachers may collect it from their hand. It's sad. Some students are receiving lecture inside water. Their seats and their legs are inside pool of water. When rain falls, they move them to one side. Why? Because somebody has eaten the money that they're supposed to give them a roof. Or some are in America or London at the detriment of another person's small child that is suffering in a place. You know what's funny? Some people who have this kind of mindset, ah, by the time we get there, we need this kind of remembrance to keep us firm so that we don't belong to them. It just takes one person to stand and say, no, I will not join them. I will not be part of it. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, and the judgment of God will come on anybody, even not only rulers. You know, the Bible says, not only those that partake in that crime, but those who help them to partake will be punished. It's in a portion in the Bible that God will not only deal with people who do evil, but as many that lift them up. You, somebody wants to see something there and it's not all. You say, I'm not going to, it's not me that will steal or, but what I will do is that I can give you a seat. You can steal it yourself. I will go on my way. The moment you do that, you are part of that crime. Praise the Lord. So let's read. Uh, and our time is gone. Let's read Job 27. Or let's read 2 Peter 2.9. 2 Peter 2.9. Does anybody see it quickly? All right, let me read. 2 Peter 2, 9. It says, Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. How many of us know that there is going to be the day of judgment? The Bible says every of our action, every of our I do words will be brought to judgment. So the judgment of God rests upon evil rulers. Where we read in Isaiah chapter 1, it said, that uh, sudden God will destroy them and they will have no remedy. Praise the Lord. The last point. As Christians, how do we handle the problem of dishonest rulers in Nigeria or in our society today? Psalm 50 verse 15. And we can literally talk outside the subjects of these uh, Bible passages. Psalm 50 verse 11. How do we, as Christians, handle the problem of dishonest leader or dishonest people? So let me read um, Psalm 50, verse 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble. 
I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Psalm 112, verse 6. 112, verse 6. It says, Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. Can we comment about that? How do we handle the problem of dishonesty? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our leaders need help. And we can do that through our prayers. Because we know that prayers changes things. I want to read First Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 quickly. Yes, sir. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For the kings and all who are in authority, that they may live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desire all men to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, God said we should call upon him. Even if it seems that we have been praying, praying, praying for Nigeria or for our country, for our, and it's like God is not asleep. We don't have any option. My boss, before I left Nigeria, told me about four years ago, he said, Felicia, I gave up playing for Nigeria. So I called him recently. Oh, he was so happy. He said, ah, we can come. all we can just do is continue to pray. I said, sir, but you told me you gave up. He said, ah, what, what option do I have? It's just to pray. What, I can't be worrying. I will still continue to pray. Because prayer does things. Sanze. And we conclude. Please give... Um, You know, correct some of these ills or dishonesty in the society. Uh, I let me use myself as, a, as an example. When I went to Nigeria in 2011, the government called me to come and serve them. I was the director of operations, Imo State IGR. So they were like bringing money. They said this position you are now, they bring money to you in Ghana must go. I said I don't. I'm uh, sorry, think I... Ghana must go is like a, a bag. Yeah. customized to carry things. So um, maybe you Google it, you see how it looks like. It's of different sizes. It's like a traveling bag, but it's made of, uh, made of a synthetic uh, material. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they said uh, the person that was here before, they bring money in Ghana. Must go. I told them, uh, I, I just come here to help, to, you know, help the state. We're going to put some kind of uh, structure that will help you know, get the money through the right way. But they said, the people that put me there, they said, why we put you there is that you bring then we share it. See? I said, I'm the one that is going to bring it and you share. I said, I'm not, I'm not going to, because of that, I had to come back here, back to the U.S. See? So I just want to let you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, quickly, please. Uh, it's a serious issue. It's a very serious issue. That if you, they say if you can't beat them, you join them. That's demonic language. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Yeah, so from what he said, I believe that we cannot change the whole society. You can change the whole community. But your own place where you find yourself, you can decide as a Christian not to be part of it. You can make your own impact in your own little way. And if all of us, the number of us here as Christians who are here in this world can decide that in my own way, I, I won't be dishonest. I think that, that will add up. Praise, praise, the Lord. praise the Lord. Joyce, want to say something again, quickly? Give her a microphone. And that, that will make me to end up in... Our only leader is God and Jesus. What did she say? Our only leader is God and Jesus. Amen. You see? So let me weave the two things that she has said. Seriously, they said, anybody that calls himself a man, let it be a man who has returned from a war. If you haven't visited a war front, don't say, ah, I'm a man. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations where the only option is to die or compromise. And that's when we need God. We all need God, I'm telling you. Nehemiah prayed his way through to building the wall of Jerusalem. And so... 
Let's not trust in our own strength and our own understanding. Sometimes the wisdom of man might fail, but if you pray to God, he might teach us what to do that will change the situation around. And hence, what she said that the Lord, and the Lord will defend us as Christians because if we know they want to harm us, he will be there to see us through. Praise the Lord. In conclusion, when a ruler's conscience is disabled, you know what that disabled me? It's given to a reprobate mind. It gives way to many adverse consequences. Citizen grown under terrible yoke, but God, who is never asleep, is able and will deliver his righteous people and judge the wicked. The food for thought, can a dishonest ruler, no matter how powerful, deceive death when the time comes? No. When God wants to visit, you will see. A memory verse, Second Peter, let's read it together. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be what? To be punished. So we can classify ourselves to where we want to belong. And I'm charging us today, in any new corner in your home, in your school, uh, in your places of work, and when you are opportune to be in leadership, let us pray to God to help us and let us stand on honesty. Say the truth. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. We bless you for today. We ask, oh God, that you help us. As we have seen beyond um, normal, the consequences of being dishonest, that the effect might leave when we are dead. We ask, oh God, that you help us to stand at our disrepose and be an ambassador of Jesus, speaking the truth at all times to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much, please. I, I appreciate those who are here, and I will encourage that we come early. Sunday school starts by 9 o'clock. Thanks to everybody. God bless you. Let's go and get ready for the service. Bro, man.